everyone. My name is Taylor Harrell and I'm a second year occupational therapy student at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about occupational therapy in an outpatient setting. As many of you know, there are several settings occupational therapists can practice in, some of which include a hospital, schools, nursing homes, home health, correctional facilities, and more. But for my in-service, I'm going to be focusing on outpatient settings. I picked this topic because I am starting my level two field work at the end of September, and I'm going to be doing my rotation at an outpatient clinic. I wanted to learn more about what to expect in an outpatient clinic, and I hope that I can teach you guys along the way as well during this in-service. The first thing that I wanna talk with you guys about is the role of an occupational therapist in an outpatient clinic. As an occupational therapist, it is our role to assist individuals with their daily tasks by improving, maintaining, maintaining, or restoring function in order to promote the most independence of the client's ability. Roles of occupational therapists consist of evaluating a client's needs and conditions, creating treatment plans, assessing a client's environment for safety and possible adaptions to improve their independence, training clients and caregivers for adaptive equipment, documenting a client's progress, and more. One cool aspect of occupational therapists is that they are trained to help individuals of all ages with all disabilities. So OTs require communication, problem solving, patience, empathy, and, adapt and adaptability skills in order to be an efficient therapist. The role of an outpatient OT consists of helping clients regain physical skills that are needed to move their arm and hand, maybe after a stroke or a brain injury, teaching them adaptable ways for performing their daily task, educating on energy conservation techniques so that a client does not tire themselves out, teaching and developing strategies for cognitive impairments to increase their independence in everyday tasks, and also teaching joint protection and training education on adaptive equipment so that it will allow clients to continue to engage in their meaningful occupations. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys today about is a little is the difference between an inpatient OT and an outpatient OT. Many people wonder what the difference is between clients that receive occupational therapy in an inpatient versus an outpatient setting. Although some of these interventions may be provided in both, there is a difference on the therapy that the clients receive and the specific clients that go to each setting. First, I'm going to talk about outpatient services. Clients who receive outpatient occupational therapy services typically are higher functioning and have fewer se severe deficits. Also, Clients who receive or outpatient therapy are typically more independent and must provide their own transportation for getting to the outpatient clinic for therapy. However, there are advantages to outpatient versus inpatient. One advantage is that in an outpatient clinic, the therapist must have more resources or may have more resources available. Like for example, they may have a therapy gym or more clinic space in order to work on their meaningful activities for the clients. In inpatient, a lot of the times the client is going to be completing their occupational therapy treatment sessions in their hospital room. So the activities may have to be modified to the space and resources available. Also, discharge planning tends to be simpler in an outpatient setting than in an inpatient setting. So what consists of discharging in an outpatient setting involves multiple things. So an outpatient occupational therapist may recommend one of their clients at discharge diet changing, diet changes, exercise programs, activity modifications, stress management techniques, and maybe sleeping positions that will allow them to sleep better and be better for their posture. Also, occupational therapists may provide more recommendations and training on, sp on sp splints, braces, adaptive equipment, and orthotics. 
there is some barriers to OT in an outpatient clinic compared to an inpatient clinic. And one of those is that the clients are responsible for getting to and from their sessions. Because they're responsible for getting to and from their sessions, this can make motivation a major contributor in their therapy outcomes. So if a client thinks that they are not seeing any improvement or they think that they should maybe be improving faster than how they are at the time, that may be a, a reason that the client may decide they wanna discharge early or they might just stop coming to the treatment sessions altogether. So this is one aspect that occupational therapists really need to make sure that they incorporate in an outpatient setting is that the client knows that they are receiving in therapy services that are benefiting them, but they may not see them after the first or second session. So it's important that the OT works on motivating the client so that they keep coming back so that they can meet all of their treatment goals that the OT has plans for them. Another aspect about outpatient occupational therapy is that the clients do not see the OT as often as they would if they were to be treated in an inpatient setting. This is just because, as I said earlier, clients that are normally seen in an outpatient setting, their, defici their deficits aren't as severe. Um, they may have just come from an inpatient setting where they have progressed a lot since maybe they had a stroke or they got into a car accident some kind of brain injury, they probably already went to inpatient, but now they're an outpatient and they're starting to get better and see some results. So they don't have to be seen as often as if they were to be seen in an inpatient session. Um, this overlaps with the notion that clients that are seen in OT and outpatient setting typically have a less severe medical condition and they're more independent a lot of the times. So the next is OT in an inpatient clinic. So occupational therapy in an inpatient clinic typically treats clients that have experienced a sudden decline in their medical or functional status due to a traumatic event, an onset of a condition, or a worsening or progressive disease. For example, someone who just experienced a stroke would receive OT in the hospital setting, maybe to address self-care needs. So they may not be able to, after their stroke, they may have trouble being able to brush their teeth again, or getting out of the bed. So self-care is a very important um, aspect that someone in an inpatient setting would work on. Also, functional mobility of their neglected side um, to improve functioning, to regain or restore as much fun independence as possible. So when, when um, a client has a stroke, it's their opposite side that's affected. So a lot of the times they will try to use, they'll neglect the side that is being impacted after their stroke. So in the inpatient setting, it's important that you incorporate their neglected side so that they're strengthening that muscle, that arm and that side of their body so that they can become more independent as possible as time goes on with those um, techniques that the OT is giving them. The goal of occupational therapy in an inpatient facility is to stabilize a medical condition, improve their functional status and safety to prevent physical and cognitive impairments, and to increase independence in their everyday task. Interventions in this setting consist of early functional mobility to help a client maybe get in, get in and out of bed, functional transfers and mobility training with safety education, bilateral integration, Mirror therapy. So mirror therapy is um, sometimes people that have had a stroke as well will see, use mirror therapy and it tricks their brain into wanting to use the other side of the hand that's being neglected. So mirror therapy is a super cool technique that it's not only used in just inpatient, it can be used in outpatient, it could be used in home health, but it is something that's also used in inpatient. Other interventions in inpatient would be um, ADL and IADL training. So it's important an OT in an inpatient setting knows how to grade tasks up and down because of the spectrum of the functional mobility and cognitive status each client in, is in during that treatment session. Just because they are in the hospital still, they just came out of maybe something that really has impacted their life and they're going through a lot of changes. However, with both outpatient and inpatient, it is important 
important that the, clair the occupational therapist use a client-centered mindset to create interventions and that they are empathetic and thinks holistically to assist the client to the best of their ability. So some typical diagnoses of occupational therapists that you would see in an outpatient setting. So before we start, I would like for everyone to just take a second and we're gonna use some retrieval practice. So I'll give you guys about 20 seconds and I want you to just use with a piece of paper or in your brain, just think of some diagnoses that we've talked about either in school or that you just know that an occupational therapist will typically treat in an outpatient facility. Okay, so I will give you guys about 20 seconds now if you guys, if to write down some things and then we will, I will go over the specific kinds of treatments and diagnoses that are typically seen. Okay, go. Okay, so I know that we um, are not in person, so I can't have anyone tell me exactly what they wrote. So I'm gonna go over and discuss the typical diagnoses that an OT would see. These consist of post-operative procedures, orthopedic diagnoses, chronic overuse injuries, acute injuries, surgeries from a fracture, joint replacements, muscle sprains and tears, soft tissue injuries and ligaments and tendons. So pretty, they're, OTC a lot, but a lot of it is orthopedic diagnoses. My field work in um, September is actually an all outpatient with just hands. So they work with a lot of hands as well. Some of the specific diagnoses would be rheumatoid arthritis, cubital tunnel syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, upper extremity fractures, and lateral and medial epicondylitis. Common interventions used in this setting include splinting, Physical agent modalities, so some example of some physical agent modalities would be an ultrasound therapy, ion tonophoresis, paraffin, electrical stimulation, neuromuscular electrical stimulation, and hot and cold therapy. Other interventions would include deep breathing, guided imagery, health education, activity modification, IADL training, therapeutic exercises, strengthening exercises, therapeutic activities, um, to work on their range of motion and to help with their gross and fine motor skills. That is something that a lot of OTs in this setting see. OTs also in this setting work with clients by doing retrograde massage, soft tissue massage, scar management, passive and active range of motion. So there are a lot of things that OTs in this setting do. That is a little bit different than what an OT would do in an inpatient facility or in another facility. However, in all facilities, an OT can do the same things. It just depends on the client. So also some assessment tools used that OTs normally use in an outpatient facility. Um, they use a dynamometer, which it, this device measures your grip strength. They would use a pinch meter. This would measure your pinch strength and is used to track, track progress. Range of motion and manual muscle test. Um, these are normally used together and it's, um, those are important to do. They would use the DASH or the disability of arm, shoulder, and hands. And this is a self-questionnaire report that measures the functional areas of concern for the upper extremity. Another assessment would be the functional reach test. Um, this is where the client stands unsupported and they reach forward as far as they can go without losing their balance. And this helps a, client or a therapist decide if, uh, evaluate if that client could be a potentially a fall risk. There's also the time to get up and go test. This is where the client gets out of their chair and walks around the room and then back to the chair. And it measures the client's independence and functional mobility. Um, so overall, we went over the role of occupational therapists in general and in an outpatient setting. We distinguished the difference between OT in an outpatient and inpatient facility, and we discussed different diagnoses OTs in an outpatient facility typically work with and the basic assessment tools that are used. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope everyone learned something new today that you didn't know before this video. Please complete my Padlet and Google form, Google form when you guys get a chance uh, after this video, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you.